Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're gonna dip our toe into the world of RFID train tracking in JMRI using the Seed Studio Grove RFID module. This is my first time using RFID technology, but it's something that I've wanted to explore for a while because being able to not only detect a train, but also identify it has big implications for automation, which is what I'm interested in. Seed were kind enough to send me the Grove RFID module to play around with, and I'm gonna be using this with the Seeduino Lotus microcontroller board, which came as part of the Grove beginner kit, which you might have seen in my Christmas video. So no messing around, let's get stuck in straight away. Here's my test setup. I've got the RFID module plugged into the D2 connection on the Seeduino Lotus, and I've placed the aerial under this stretch of track. The Seeduino Lotus, which is an Arduino based board, is connected to my computer using the USB cable. Let's go onto the Seed wiki pages, look up the module and scroll down to find the example code. Copy this into the Arduino IDE. Hit verify and you might find that you get some errors like this. And these are because when you've copied the code over there are some hidden characters that you can't see but are in there that the compiler doesn't like. The compiler will highlight these lines. You just need to go through and delete what looks to be a space. Once you've done that, upload it to the board and open up the serial monitor. Now we need an RFID tag to test the system with. So now is a good time to pause and talk about RFID tags because this can get a bit confusing. Not all RFID tags will work with all RFID readers. You need to ensure you buy tags that match the specification of your reader. The Grove reader is 125 kilohertz and it reads EM4100 RFID tags. So you need to search for those tags that work with that frequency. Other types of readers might work at higher frequencies or only be compatible with certain brands of tag. So just keep that in mind. Because we're looking at using this on a model railway, I went online and found these small round tags which should fit into a wagon or under a loco. They're 25 millimeters in diameter and they're cheap costing £2.75 for a pack of five. There were smaller options, but these were more expensive and I'm a cheapskate. Okay, so let's move this down over the aerial and we can see that the tag has been picked up when it was about five to seven centimeters above the aerial. So now let's drop this into a wagon where it could be hidden under a coal load or something like that. It should easily be in range. Let's move it over the aerial and see if it's detected. And there it is. Now let's close the serial connection and see if we can get this to work with JMRI. I've got the latest stable version of JMRI installed and if we open it up, go to preferences and set up a new RFID connection. Select direct serial connection. The serial port for our board is COM9. We'll leave the adapter as generic standalone and in the connection protocol, JMRI have handily included Seed Studio, which sounds promising. The connection prefix is F and the connection name is RFID. Save that and restart JMRI. Now in JMRI, go to tables and select ID tags. Let's run the tag over the aerial again and we can see that the tag has been picked up in JMRI. In the username box, we can add the name of the wagon that this is attached to, so we'll put in Bestwood. If we go to the sensors table, we can also see that a new sensor has automatically been created for the reader called FS1, and this is active when the tag is present. The other thing that's automatically being created is a reporter. When the tag is over the aerial, the reporter holds the tag number and the username. Now let's go into the layout editor, create a couple of end bumpers and join these together with a stretch of track. Right click, edit the track and add a block. The block occupancy sensor can be the RFID reader sensor and under the reporter section, we'll select the RFID reader as the reporter and tick the use current report from the reporter as the value for the block. Then we need to add the block contents onto the layout. So now we can see that when the tag is over the RFID reader, the block shows as occupied and the name of the wagon appears next to it. So that was pretty successful. The main thing that impressed me was how easy it was to set up and hopefully it's given you a taste of what's possible. If you wanted to give this a go yourself, then the Grove Seed Studio RFID modules can be bought direct from Seed or from the likes of Rapid Online, the Pi Hut, RS Online, Robotshop.com, etc. And they cost just under 10 pounds. Obviously in this video, we've only really dipped our toe into the world of RFID train tracking and JMRI. There's quite a bit more research for me still to do before I decide what I want to use on my layout. And there are some big questions that still to be answered. For example, this Grove module works using the UART communication protocol, but there are other readers on the market that use SPI, I2C and MQTT. And I don't 
don't know which is best. How many readers can you have connected to a single controller? I'd need quite a few readers on my layout and I'd like to connect groups of readers located in a similar area to the same controller. Having one controller per reader isn't gonna be cost effective. And cost is something that needs to be factored in. The Grove reader is 10 pounds. Some of the other readers are a bit cheaper, but even still, it's gonna be quite an investment to get the system up and running on a large layout. The tag read speed and detection range with the Grove module were pretty impressive and could pick up tags moving across it at fairly high speed. But at what speed does it start to become unreliable? And in this demonstration, we didn't have any power to the track or electronics surrounding it, and the area was just under the track. How would a DCC signal impact detection, and what if the reader was below a baseboard? What about if we had multiple readers next to each other on parallel tracks? Would there be any crossover detection? The Grove reader seems to be pretty accurate and only picks up tags that are directly over it, which is reassuring. And if we still wanted to use automation tools such as Dispatcher in JMRI, how does this interact with the RFID detection? So yeah, plenty of questions there and still some way off building my own system. There are of course some off the shelf options to consider. For example, a company called Starfish Rail started selling a pre-built system recently and Merg are in the process of updating their offering. Maybe paying a bit more for a tried and tested system to save time and hassle of developing your own is sometimes worth it. I'll let you know what I decide, but for now this is going on the back burner because whilst I enjoy looking at the technology, I need to get on with my build and this is something that can be fitted later. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks to my channel members and patrons for supporting this research. It's very much appreciated. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.